you so much, Dylan. Happy spring, everyone. And thank you for coming to my presentation. I wanted to, uh, first of all, give a little brief overview of who I am for those who may not know. As Dylan mentioned, my name is Samantha LaDuke. I'm founder of LaDukeTrading.com. And I am a macro to micro analyst, educator, and trader. I trade for a living and I support clients who do the same. I am very interested in multiple time frames, chase, swing, and trend. Trend, but uh, this particular uh, presentation is how I come to find my best, most durable trend ideas. How I get, and then when I am incentivized, if you will, to enter based on technical analysis. But it doesn't always start with technical analysis. It's typically a macro backdrop and a theme that I am trying to prove out and confirm with intermarket analysis. So let me share my screen and let me share with you how I do that. First and foremost, hopefully you can see this presentation slide. Um, that is my. Uh, background of website, which is LaDukeTrading.com. I am a discretionary trader. So this is what I do every day. I, I run a live trading room and I am setting up my best uh, macro to micro analysis, as well as education, the supporting reasons for my trend ideas, um, as well as the actual trade setups in the chart, the annotated charts for clients in my Slack workspace. So I am someone who's very much looking at um, engaging with clients in a live trading room, but uh, separately, you know, formulating my big ideas. And uh, those are the basis of the trends, which then we can kind of navigate around, um, defend if need be, or trade actively around. Because Chase, I consider to be much more active trading, uh, momentum trading. Trend trades are really lots and lots of meat. So you have a, a durable trend for many, many months. So that is my focus um, for my Big Ideas product, which is part of my fishing club. Um, and it is very much around finding durable trends at inflection points that move markets, stocks, currencies come out of these cryptos, bonds. Um, so I cover all asset classes. And it's very much a macro backdrop that I begin with looking at where we have policies that might obviously impact um, economics and then using my intermarket analysis, which is very much a compare and contrast to compare which particular um, sector is stronger versus weaker. I want to go with obviously rotation of sectors. Um, and then there's lots of good fishing uh, in those particular sector rotations. And then I'm always, always testing it against technical analysis to deliver the micro, which is the actionable trade setups. So in particular, I'm you know, very focused on um, basket trading, some call it. So if energy is moving, which it has been, and it's been a call since summer of 2020, I want to be able to uh, identify the best stocks in the energy sector and then move forward with those plays. Um, I am very much focused on managing the trade for clients and then warning of potential event risk or volatility that reprices everything. So that's definitely the risk in any um, endeavor, especially when you're just entering um, a trend trade that you hope turns into a durable trend. Um, but that is very much my focus. And this is the um, reason why I think I have been, uh, you know, it, uh, interviewed and asked about how I come to do this market timing calling thing that I do, which is basically I am sitting in front of a computer analyzing, educating, and trading all day long. And I love to share my news, my nose for news, but also my ability to operationalize the macro themes into, um, you know, actionable trades. So I'm very fortunate that I have been on, interviewed regularly on Bloomberg and CNBC and I and Lynn Zanity, which is a great um, podcast, Stock Charts TV. I did my uh, year ahead uh, look and it was been very much focused on uh, my top prediction growth to values. I interviewed the first of the year, which was that NASDAQ would underperform. And it was time very much for inflation to uh, really, really give a boost to the value trades. That was not my first time with that particular prediction. I've been very much focused on this theme of things over paper. Inflation is sticky. Um, oil as an inflation hedge. These are all themes that I basically have um, been 
been uh, focusing on since July of 2020. No joke. It's been really a long running theme. And there's still a lot of meat on the bone with that. So I'll show you that basically um, this theme is 100% still in play. Uh, you can see July of 2020. I believe very much the upside catalyst for equity markets advance. And we had it because of all that infusion of liquidity. Um, what inflation would look like. Oil shock is yet to come. We're going to go talk about that. Rate spikes are coming. So this has been a theme of mine that I have gone over again and again and again, including my oil call back in March of 2021 for $130 crude. And we hit that. So many people were very, very suspicious of that, but I had my reasons for that call and very much was um, the paper uh, to, was going to be replaced by things, just hard assets. And oil was also an inflation proxy. So that has been a fabulous um, uh, parabola to trade. In fact, back in October of last year, I did a presentation. This was from the slide where I said, okay, here we are. Um, I can see we trigger 100, we're going to go right up to 130. And I also made a follow up call to that recently using this intermarket analysis of SPX to CRB. CRB is a commodity index which is largely oil based and up here kind of represents paper. So think NASDAQ outperformance, mega cap, but also under the surface, all the mid cap um, tech, all the growth you know, exponential growth plays that folks were excited about, whether the ARC proxies or the SPACs or the EVs or the KWEB China contingency. So all of this represented 13 years of outperformance. And that's why I basically came to that conclusion that we were going to have a rotation and it was going to be sizable into, into value right? This was a newsletter first of the year. And then I put a 130 oil price on crude with very much this kind of backdrop. So first you've got the macro, which is a durable theme for inflation and with it, hard commodities and hard assets. And then all the proxy trades around that became really great ideas. But to get into a trade, you still want to have a technical um, you know, analysis, strong hold so you can really defend, know when to enter, know when to exit. But with my oil trade, um, 130 was, was tagged. Now we're going to have a little bit of chop. And I believe we're going to be at 160 in West Texas intermediate, intermediate crude, excuse me, by summer. And uh, would not surprise me at all if we go to 260 by the election or sometime later in the year. So this is still a durable trade. And I want to kind of show um, that I'm, this is not my first time. I do this all the time. So my job is market timing. It's exactly what I do. I time tops, I time bottoms, but I'm also doing that so that I can find the inflection points for these durable trends. And then I can really go in and pick out the best of the agricultural plays, for example, the energy plays, the industrials that happen to suit this particular value rotation theme. So I've done a lot of market timing calls um, in my career, and it's really where I have my kind of reputation of volatility timing because I follow volatility so closely as that's what reprices um, oftentimes and reverses trends. So right now, as I mentioned, I kind of overviewed this call that I had for 130 crude, we actually hit it, no question. And now we have a potential, I believe, of going to 160 by summer and then 260 by end of year. So before I go into the individual stocks that are current trends in plays, uh, literally the physical trades that I have recommended and taken with clients at, for some time now that are very much around this particular theme. This article was written for clients back in March of 2021, and it was in support of my oil as an inflation hedge. But I also warned that bonds were going to continue to sell off. Okay, that's the macro backdrop. Um, and be careful. So to date, bonds have sold off 26, 27% TLT. So it has been a fabulous continued theme of bonds short, interest rates, yields higher, commodities and hard assets higher, and the stocks that basically play in that playground as very strong um, uh, trend ideas 
that we made into trades. So this is still my baseline bet. Um, the indices did correct 20%. Uh, obviously, into last week, we had a massive short covering rally, uh, which was very much based on options expiration. And now we have to kind of test and prove if we're going to have any follow through to the upside. But that is why I do this uh, short, intermediate and long term uh, trading with clients. Short is typically chases that are you know, one to three days, one to three weeks out, you know, at most uh, using options. Swings are trades that are going to last a few weeks. Um, or up to a few months. And then trends obviously start out where I think it's going to go to a particular price target within one to three months, and they end up being long term, you know, it, they can be multi year trades. So what I wanted to do is show you some of these um, items today, which kind of represent the sector rotation calls and where I think that there's still a lot of meat on the bone with value plays long and tech plays short, maybe not into end of month, mind you, because we have rebalancing for the end of the quarter, but after that. So um, this is basically my main theme that I've had since summer of 2020. It is still in play that we are short everything and the supply chain problems were not going away and inflation was not going to peak and oil was going to move higher as an inflation hedge long before Russia-Ukraine um, war. So this had not even been on my radar. Sorry about that. Little reminder here for Google Drive. All right, so this was it. We didn't have enough anything, groceries, inventory, but way too much liquidity. So too much money chasing too few things. And I, I, I'm i going to kind of go through now technically where that looks on. There we go. All right, so these are trend plays and literally since we started and price they are today and the percentage change, I'm gonna show you them on a, um, on a chart to show you what is the secret sauce? What is it that gives these types of returns in the value plays because they are just phenomenal representation of basically inflation. I have a few that I've added recently that haven't really materialized yet. They're kind of down here. Um, basic industries, you're going to see transportation. Um, yes, I'm also fond of gold, but a lot of focus has been in the energy sector, bar none. So what I want to do is just kind of put this over to the side and bring up my chart and show you what I look at technically to get me into and out of a trade for clients. And I'm not really going to do this in any particular order, except maybe just alphabetical. But here is the deal. So uh, first, we'll kind of start with BTU. Uh, BTU was a trade that I had recommended early because it had this bottom fishing play. I needed it to get and stay above, you know, $5 and change. I had been talking about it in the tube, but actually didn't do anything until $5.18. But what I want to kind of point out is what all should have on their radar is this 10-week exponential moving average. I have a really strong opinion about many, many charts uh, basically following this 10 week exponential moving um, average, which basically means the trend is your friend. It comes up typically into some re resistance levels. This happens to be a 200 week and then pulls back. It has to kind of retest that 10 week. That was a very large pullback to the 50 week. But obviously you can see that that continued higher. Nice little scoop pattern. So whether you're a pattern trader or you just want to get in to some trades that are actually doing um uh, behaving well, meaning they're doing their 10 week, they're staying above on the 10 week. That's what I want to kind of focus on. Let me just do this real quick. So I'm going to. All right. So here's an example. This is in the healthcare space. Let me get it nice and clean so you don't see any lines. All right. So this is ABBV, many of you know it, it's a drug manufacturer and this chart really took off last, uh, had a September drawdown to the 50 week, but then once it took off above, right, it really did a beautiful job of staying above the 10 week, it pulled back to the 10 week, broke out again, sideways, breaking out. So now it's a little extended, but the point is this has done nothing wrong. So this has been in place since, 
you know, um, when it broke out above this September timeframe, some clients have been long for years and they can kind of go through a little bit more volatility than I can. I really cut it loose if it closes below the 10 week and I keep it long if it stays above the 10 week. So you can kind of see, and by the way, my chart setup is hour for chases, day for swings and week for trend line. And basically you can see when it starts to get out of this distribution area, it just does a beautiful job if it's a proper trend of staying above, okay? So just recently added some gold miners, mostly because of this trend line, it broke out. And again, it's above the 10 week and it's holding pretty well. So there are a few in the gold miner sector that just got added recently and have been performing obviously really well. Some more in the um, healthcare space that might be a little bit more choppy, but again, once they go through a period of distribution and healthcare is very much kind of a safety uh, sector, healthcare plan in this particular case, it has gotten a little defended, broken through, but then gotten right back up. This is still fine. This trend is not as beautiful perhaps as ABBV, but it's doing really well. A lot of the energy trades have just been hot fire flames. They break above the 10 week, they come back down, might get violent for a week, and then they pop right back up like a daisy. They get extended, that happens to be a Bollinger Band. They pull back to the 10, they break out, they pull back to the 10, they break out, they pull back to the 10. Get the point? This is really important if you are a trend trader to have a 10 week moving average on a weekly chart. You can also use it, by the way, um, on a, on a monthly, like for example, I love to show this one as an example of distribution. Okay, Coupa Software. I happen to know this company. It was a tech short recommendation when it did this. So this is on a monthly, but just to kind of show you the 10, the relationship with the 10, stayed above the 10, overshot, but got right back in, really got above. And then it started getting very large expansion candles, which are a little bit more nerve wracking. It shows distribution is in play, but it never broke, never broke the 10 until this fateful earnings. Boom. All right. So it was extremely overvalued from a fundamental standpoint, which is another way to kind of assess stocks. Some people do that. I'm very much macro intermarket technical, but I'll also look at um, fundamentals. And I believe very firmly that even when it was 130, it was overvalued. So the high price earnings uh, stocks were going to be, we're going to, I believe, succumb to a lot of selling pressure and beautiful example though of the 10 week kind of keeping you in the trade and then keeping you out. And if you're short, notice, which we were, it never closed above the 10 week, never closed above the 10 week, fell, fell, fell. And I still think it has uh, 40 as a handle. So th this, as an example, I'm showing you a tech stock that was under distribution, failed the 10 week and continued. And then of course, tons and tons of um, energy stocks that have not broken the 10 week or I should say commodities. AXP happens to be another kind of play that many like. I happen to really like this one over Visa and MasterCard, but it got a little distributive and it broke its 10 week, but then it got right back in, broke down. So this is a more volatile, uh, trending, but volatile stock. Um, I'm still bullish and most times it gets defended. ATI is Allegheny. It has just recovered after a long, beautiful trend and then a long pullback, it's now getting back above. So that just kind of shows you that some of these plays will take a little while to go through distribution, but as long as they get back above the 10 week, like BJ's is basically Costco's you know, little cousin. Um, it's also a trend trade. I think this will be a, a later stage Costco. So by the way, Costco's also on there. Beautiful trend, this had pulled back, but then once it got back above the 10 week, look at that gorgeous 10 week, pulls back to the 10 week, ah, oh, stunning, then it busted. So now I'm out. I want this to prove itself and get and stay above the 10 week again, and it has. So these are examples of um, recommended big ideas. I'm only in the Bs, by the way, uh, that we trade around. And oftentimes when it gets up to, a, it gets a little extended like Berkshire Hathaway, Lots of lots and lots of beautiful trending and then tons and tons of distribution, right? We break out, we pull back to the 10 week. You can see how this is now extended again. Wouldn't surprise me to pull back again, okay? So then 
the clients can then kind of position, maybe add a few puts, maybe they don't care, maybe they want to sell some calls, uh, maybe they're going to be more mindful around earnings. Um, but this is just literally the list of, I already showed you BTU, I'm going through the alphabetically. Um, CCJ is also a valid, volatile macro idea for uranium, very much like this big picture. I think this is going to get defended. Um, this is basically a play on uranium with URA, sorry, URA, and you can see how they come back to the 50 week. But again, it's solid when it's above the 10 week. It's a very nice trend. And that's basically why um, I will get into that particular play. It's not always a pattern, like in this particular case with kind of a trend line, but it's very much the fact that it gets above, it breaks out, pulls back to the 10, 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 and then it goes into a parabola, which happened to be on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But it was already a trend play. Mosaic was already a trend play. And they stay a trend play as long as they stay above the 10 week. One that was removed recently was Cisco. I have long liked Cisco as a trend play, but it did something wrong. It gapped down on a weekly. And to me, that's the reversal of a trend. So now it loses my faith in it until it can get defended and close that gap. Okay, so that's just an example. Um, CVS is another trend. Beautiful. Pull back to the 10. You can kind of see it. Beautiful trends. Um, one that I'm very, very excited about right now is copper. So I believe copper is going to do um, a very large move. And I've been talking about this with clients. This happens to be the copper ETF that's coming out, right, of some, some weekly uh, shenanigans. But basically, it is above the 10 now and staying here. I think it's going to shoot through here and move a lot higher. That obviously includes FCX with kind of a similar shape, but it's more volatile. It's not the underlying commodity. Commodities right now are wild, wild west as it relates to um, the futures market. So these are retail proxies. I'm basically showing you some durable trends that might have undergone some digestion and now they're getting back into trend. Copper in particular is a very strong theme of mine for things over paper into this year. So not only do I believe copper is going to move much higher with oil, um, but the continuation of agriculture, again, beautiful, might have a little bit more distribution. By the way, this is a 21 moving average. So that's basically just to let you know, you get 10, 21, 30, and 50. Um, and some, relate, some charts have kind of like a relationship with how much they move around on their, their weekly. It's called the average true range. So I am aware of that, but for the most part, I'm looking for that continuation of a close above the 10 week. And then when it breaks down below it, it's, it's, it's removed. Um, and I'll wait until it can prove itself again. So many examples um, of, that I've just shown you of trending stocks or ETFs that are firmly in a things over paper macro backdrop based on inflation, higher yields, um, inflation, et cetera, um, and scarcity, right? Commodity scarcity. Uh, but they're not all trending like that. Some of them are bottom fishing plays like the BTU. I had recommended this, hold on, let me just see if I, uh, recommended this back in October and it was 1884. It moved very quickly, all of a sudden, very strongly. Um, it got to 25 and now it's 28. This is going to be a slower mover. It's very much under the radar. It's basically a, a, a shovel ready stock. Um, but I really think that this is going to be a nice play moving forward. So this is the type of analysis that I will give for clients. Um, it, you know, this is related to nuclear uranium. They're all kind of doing the, uh, a great um, bottom fishing, right? There's lots of room here off the bottom. So this might not be a smooth play, but this is an example of one that I recommended at 18 and it's now 29 and still long. I don't see any reason to, um, to break that up. All right. So Raytheon and some of the other defense contractors, uh, aerospace and defense, also are trends. They might they have been defended above this 8250, which happens to be quarterly. This is now a new trend above 92. Yes, 
it might have been a little, you know, um, situational because of Russia, Ukraine, but it broke out before we were alerted to that fact. So you can see the 10 week is now serving as nice support for these defense contractors, including Lockheed, including Northrop, um, including General Dynamics. This one's a little bit smoother. So I highly recommend for sure using the 10 week in your technical analysis, but it also helps to have a durable theme. This happens to be intrepid potash, which is um, agricultural inputs. And it did pull back, right? It had a, a breakout. So from a chart pattern standpoint, it came down to support and then broke out again, exploded. It doubled in very quick order. Again, this candle is in large part um, Russia, you know, boosted um, on fear of fertilizers, not on fear, but actual fear, uh, realization that fertilizers would be um, restricted and that creates food inflation. But this particular uh, stock proxy was a great tell. So these are some of the, the stocks. I obviously have a lot more. Um, I've got 66 total. This is shipping. And you're going to notice that a lot of these are totally related to energy theme. That's Oxy, very extended. Um, Exxon and Chevron were early longs because they're just not going to go away no matter what. Um, and they performed really very, very well. So my job for clients is I look for the strongest stocks in a particular sector and then identify when to go long, when to protect if it's getting extended, like right here. We're in a parabola. We're trading parabola of oil right now. But as long as it stays on a close above the 10 week, we're good. OK, so that's what I wanted to kind of share with you in regards to trend trading using a weekly time frame and the 10 week, having a macro theme to kind of help you identify what current to swim in. And then you can use some fundamentals, right? I mean, this is beautiful, beautiful earnings, tons of profit. Um, you know, floor is an oversold value play, but it's in a sweet spot uh, that's really under the radar. I mean, so there's lots of different reasons. Um, tech, uh, NASDAQ underperformance for the year, I think still has room to go. A lot of meat on the bone short still, especially with mega cap. Um, I've talked about that before. Growth to value rotation. Um, but this durable theme of, uh, in short, um, you know, this things over paper, things over paper means commodities and proxies that are related to those. Um, and I have my favorites. And I, then I do custom engagement with clients to identify um, what their time frame is, also their risk tolerance, uh, you know, their experience trading options, or is it straight stock, and how to trade around an earnings event. Um, or volatility that comes into the market like we just had recently, where the, the SPY pulled back 12% and NASDAQ pulled back 20%. So this is my interpretation of big idea trading, okay? Um, for me, it's very selective. I'm looking for the highest probability trading and investing setups. I'm not... I'm totally engaging with clients on a shorter time frame in my live trading room, but I want to explain for those who are interested in investing, being active investors, why a stock or underlying asset moves the way it does, what to trade, how to trade it, and then I deliver all those market insights um, to my clients in Slack and trade setups and live trading room. So this is really my approach to identifying very durable trends and then communicating it to clients. Uh, I am also available on Twitter. Let me just find that real quick, which is a great way to kind of see my continued macro themes. I'll, I'll tease and hint, uh, like when I see an article that's very much things over paper, it means I'm really interested in that particular um, area like copper right now. It looks, it looks incredibly explosive. And I don't think oil's done either. And I've shown some of the reasons for that as well. Um, so this is my website. Uh, you can see that I have algo risk indicators. I also have a Discord, Discord server for uh, younger, I would say more beginner level uh, momentum traders, fabulous community, fabulous contributors, active traders, moderators. Um, I, even on the other side, I have an institutional product which is run by a longtime client of mine, Craig Shapiro. 
And he sits there on Bloomberg for those institutional clients that are interested um, in his perspective, as well as a fundamental take from Aisha and my macro timing calls with my intermarket analysis. Um, so you can find also this Discord. It's got a lot of women contributors. I'm very much in support of bringing up women into trading and finance. So I'm very proud of this offering, especially for young new traders. So you really have a mix of um, trading formats for beginners. Also, I would call the fishing club membership our intermediate level. And then for institutions, you've got um, institutional edge. And that was my overview. And you want to sneak peek any other additional plays? You can see that they're very much still in, I don't see any reason to take these off yet. And I go through it every week to see if there's any reason to remove it um, from the trend big ideas list. I also have analysis that I run for new ideas every week, and I'm testing, testing, testing to see if it should uh, be considered. But recently, I have um, had no technology stocks that or semiconductor stocks that meet my criteria for big idea trend trades this year. So that's my analysis. Again, Samantha LaDuke, founder of LaDukeTrading.com, and I am very happy to be here. Thank you so much, Money Show. Thank you, Ms. Ledoux. We hope that you get a lot of emails and questions specifically about your uh, trading services and platforms. I know I'm going to be looking into your Discord, so oh, I super. Hope, to, uh, hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Have everyone happy spring. Thanks again. Bye-bye.